Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the basics that you will learn before you start learning medical coding and some tips to help. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got three messages from the same individual within one hour time, right? So the first one says, Medical terminology is too much information to learn. Somebody liked that comment. And then they followed up a few seconds later with, um, I'm freaking out, too much terminology, too much information. And then a few minutes later, they said, do you have advice for pathophysiology? So when you get into a medical coding program or if you're studying independently, one of the very first things that you are going to learn is about medical terminology. This is going to lay your foundation of the whole process. You cannot learn medical coding competently without having a good grasp, not a strong grasp, but just a good grasp on medical terminology. You have to have some understanding of it. You have to know how to piece words together. So here are some tips to help. When you are learning medical terminology, think of it like when you were learning first in school. You don't learn to read words right out of the gate in kindergarten. No, you learn your letters. And then you start adding letters together and you start getting words, okay? So that's the same kind of thing that you have to think about when you're learning medical terminology because medical terminology is its whole language to itself. Okay, these are a mix of Latin and Greek words, right? And the best way to learn medical terminology is to learn your prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words. Now, when you learn prefixes, suffixes, and root words, you can piece words together and you can understand what they mean a lot faster rather than trying to go through and memorize whole words right out of the gate, okay? So again, if you start off with your uh, prefixes, your suffixes, and your root words, that's going to set you up for success. And it makes the process of learning medical terminology a lot more digestible than just trying to, you know, dive into the deep end of the pool and try, try to start looking up codes and then you're getting lost because you don't know what term to look up. So again, if you are learning medical terminology first, don't freak out about, oh, it's so much information. If you are working through a workbook, there is no workbook that I recommend specifically. I do not care for these workbooks either. This is like medical terminology for medical coders because that's just a gimmick. You can use any medical terminology book because we all use the same medical terms, okay? It's a whole language. Everybody speaks the same language. So you can find a medical terminology workbook and just work through it. If you don't, if you can't, if you find yourself like not memorizing it right away, you don't have to. That's not the point. You are going to learn it after a while, but go through the process of learning and don't try to put so much pressure on yourself to learn because as you start to make it more of a practice and you have to be studying 20 hours per week, I don't want to hear that you have a family, you have kids, you have a full-time job. If it is important to you and you want to do this, you will make the time to learn. I say this all the time on my channel. There's lots of people who write to me and tell me how they have a full-time job, they've got families, and they've got people who really need them, and they still manage to squirrel in 20 hours per week like I've instructed. Now, what I say how you hit 20 hours per week is you do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunchtime, 30 minutes in the afternoon, and then one hour and one hour, that's three and a half hours, right? In one day that you do of studying. Now, whether that three and a half hours is spent listening to videos on YouTube, there is Crash Course. Uh, Crash Course has anatomy and physiology. Now, that is a fantastic channel to watch, to learn. From. And they're little 10 minute videos, 13 minute videos, and they have like a lot of really good animation. So if you need to watch something to kind of keep you engaged, 
that's a really good channel to watch on YouTube. That is the number one <laughs> that I recommend for anatomy and uh, and pathophysiology as well. So tune into that channel and watch those videos. Make that a part of your study. Get around those medical terms so that you can start to pick up the language. Getting scared and freaking out about medical terminology and then wanting to run away from it because it's too much for you, that means that you're trying to do too much and you're not studying properly. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, one hour. That's three and a half hours in one day. You do this over a course of five days at 17 and a half hours. And then you just have two and a half hours on a Saturday or Sunday to, to work through and you'll make 20 hours per week. Do not neglect those two and a half hours on the weekend. Somebody was saying that they are studying, oh, I'm studying and I'm following Blue's method of study, so I've been studying three and a half hours per day for five days. Ma'am, <laughs> you need to remember to do those two and a half hours on the weekend as well, because that's getting the whole thing, because two and a half hours on those weekends that adds up, that's 10 extra additional hours that it adds up to in a month's time, right? And so you wanna make sure that you're doing that, that you are getting all that time in consistently. Now, if you're not able to meet 20 hours in a week, maybe there's a lot of stuff that would happen that week and you just didn't have enough time to squirrel it in somewhere, it's okay, pick the ball up and keep going and you can get to your 20 hours again. There's no need to try to double up or do, do any of those things you want to make sure that you are getting in there and just spending the time to study flash cards write them out yourself on index cards for those uh, prefixes and suffixes and root words that you're having trouble with and take a little stack of them and practice 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 with those and then once you've mastered those take another little stack maybe 10 or 15 per stack and then just work through those because that's small enough that you'll be able to like go through those, go through those and you'll know what it means so that way you can start piecing words together. And when you do stuff like that, it's going to change the way that you look at learning medical terminology because you will not learn medical terminology overnight. It is not something that you can pay other people to help you learn. This is a self directed, self motivated a uh, type of subject that you have to invest time in. I am 16 years into my career and I'm still learning medical terminology. So if that should give you any indication, just so you guys know, it is a constant learning process. So don't think that you're gonna learn it overnight and just because you're not picking it up fast does not mean that you're not getting it. Put in the 20 hours per week working through the workbooks 30 minutes at a time till you get to that three and a half hours in a day. And then you, again, you do that consistently over the week and into the weekend and you'll be just fine. It's the people who try to do too much and push themselves to learn all this stuff. That's, that's when they start getting like this person and they're freaking out over medical terminology. And then they want to ask me, do you have any advice for pathophysiology? So pathophysiology is a study of like the disease process of these conditions. If you're freaking out over medical terminology, what do you think you're going to do with pathophysiology? So you take one subject at a time. If you're trying to juggle too much, that's why you're freaking out. So don't do that. Don't set yourself up for failure or trying to take on all of these things and then, you know, just living up to people's expectation of, oh, you see, they quit again. They started something and then they quit. They can't see anything through because you you get too excited and you want to do too much. Don't do too much. With medical terminology, you have to write out those flashcards. You can always go online and, and um, go to Quizlet. Quizlet has lots of uh, medical terminology flashcard decks that you can use. Don't ask me about apps because I don't use apps, okay? I am old fashioned in the fact that I write out flashcards and you can too. So do that, work with the flashcards, watch the um, videos on crash from crash course on YouTube. And so that way you can get that practice in. This is not an ad for crash course, um, but I'm just sharing the things that help me as a medical coder and a health information professional. 
those are the things that I use. So watching those videos and changing it up, getting any workbook, you can go to the public library. You do not have to spend one red cent to learn medical terminology. Go to the public library. There will be workbooks there. Get yourself a spiral notebook, okay? And start writing out um, the medical terms and start working through those quizzes that are in the uh, workbooks for medical terminology. If you are subscribed to my Patreon channel, I make uh, word searches and I do crossword puzzles. I've done all kinds of quizzes about medical terminology as well. The minimum pledge is $10 per month. You do not have to subscribe past a month, but that $10 gets you access to all of the quizzes that I've posted in the last six years. So that's plenty of content, okay? <laughs> and we have a once a month live study hall on my Patreon channel. And this live study hall is not pre-recorded at all, but um, you can come there, you can ask your coding question, you can ask questions about the industry, whatever you wanna do, because it's just one hour that I spend with my Patreons. Um, that are in the $10 and up levels, and we just talk about whatever questions they have. We've had some wonderful and lively discussions that I really enjoy. So that's one of the perks of, you know, being on my Patreon channel. But again, I tried to break it up. You know, when I was learning medical coding, my mom uh, would make me um, crossword puzzles as well. And so now I do that for my Patreons to help them learn. And of course, doing the, um, the word searches, I won't put the words in the word bank. I will just make the word search and you have to find 20 words related to whatever subject it is. So that gets you engaged to look and make you think, right? About like, okay, that's a medical term. That's a medical term. That's a medical term or that's this related to this or whatever. And so that way you can start learning those things. Okay. That's just part of the things that I do to help. Okay. But you have to work on that medical terminology. And even when maybe you're in a program right now and you're completing medical terminology, you can still continue to work through another workbook as you go through the process of learning medical coding. Because the, the more competent that you are in medical terminology, <laughs> trust me, that's going to be a big difference between how you perform as a coder, because that's one of the really big things. Anatomy is another really uh, big subject that we learn and for to learn coding. Um, I'm trying to hurry up and film this episode, so <laughs> that's why I'm talking fast. But anatomy is another one. Anatomy and physiology is another subject that we learn uh, when we're learning coding. And it's very important to understand the body. It's very important to work through those exercises as well. And again, you can go to the public library. You can find those workbooks. And there's tons of videos on YouTube that talk about anatomy as well. And again, crash course, but there's also um, videos on YouTube that they can show you surgeries. And that's another really great way of having that visual and the anatomy at the same time in your head. That will really help you. So if that's something that you're struggling with and maybe using the books is too much for you it really all depends on the type of book you're using too because some of these books the way that they're written <laughs> no bueno <laughs> so uh there's a set of uh coding books that i personally do not like i always talk about it all the time but i'm not going to talk about it on this episode but those particular coding books um those are not very helpful for new coders because they don't explain things in a way that is helpful for new coders the books that I recommend are in the description box below. So just make sure you check those out so that way you can use something else other than what the program gave you, okay? And again, you don't have to spend money to learn this. Go to the public library and check out um, the books that they have there about anatomy and, and medical terminology and those kinds of things. Work through those workbooks. It is for your benefit that you learn this. Because when you get out in the real world and you pass your certification exam, these providers are going to expect you to be competent. And if you are not competent, then you are just going to reinforce what a lot of them think about us as coders. There's a lot of coders out there who are not equipped and who don't equip themselves with that knowledge either. Now, you don't know what you don't know. There's a lot of people that get into this industry not knowing because they don't do their research. But that doesn't have to be you. That's why whenever people watch my channel and they say, oh, you're so blunt, you're so direct, 
I have to be because no one has time for these silly games that adults want to play as far as like, oh, I'm so scared and I don't know what to do. And I paid this person to help me and I paid that person. I took this course, that course, doing all of these things, paying out all of this money, but not doing the heavy lifting hard work, which is working through flashcards, watching those videos, taking the time every single day to incorporate um, and giving yourself a day off, obviously days off. Uh, but incorporating some of those things into your daily habits so that way you can start getting that exposure. The other thing that can kind of help you with pathophysiology, of course, is watching these videos on YouTube. But if you watch House, the, the show House MD, now this is a this is an older show. <laughs> um, and there, of course, there's Grey's Anatomy, but Grey's Anatomy is about the drama. House actually was um modeled after real life cases so they start talking about symptoms they start talking about medical terminology they use those terms sarcoidosis they use a lot of those things lupus you know they start talking about different conditions while they're having the show so that's a really great way to kind of listen and pick up those medical terms when you start watching those types of shows it also helps. It helps to kind of incorporate that whole getting to know the industry, right? Even before you get in. So don't discount the medical terminology, the anatomy, pathophysiology, and those types of things, those subjects, because those are our core subjects before getting into coding. Now, again, some people are doing things a little backwards and weird and you know, they don't do all of that first and they try to jump into coding. You can't do that. It's, it's more than just looking up a code. Looking up a diagnosis code or a procedure code is not like looking up a word in the dictionary. There's a lot of, of things that go into it. You have to know the book. You have to understand how to use the book. And the only way you do that is to spend time with it. Again, there's no class that you can take. There's no amount of money that you can spend to learn it. You have to spend time with it. The investment of, of spending money on tutors or spending money on these classes is to supplement what you've already done. If you are getting stuck and not really kind of knowing like what to do and, and you need somebody to kind of help you to bridge that gap, then that's when you know getting with a, a really good tutor will help you. But again, you are trying to spend all this money trying to prep and you're not doing the heavy lifting that all that money that you spent on prep is going to be for naught because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Okay. If you already have your coding manuals, uh, maybe you have Optum. Optum is the one that I recommend. Now, this is not an ad for Optum, <laughs> but everybody that watches my channel knows how much I love Optum coding books. The ICD-10 CM Expert for Physicians, um, the ICD-10 uh, PCS manual as well, and, um, and the Hicks-Picks book all come from Optum. The AMA CPT Professional Edition is the one that we all have to have. So if you have your books and maybe you're still learning medical terminology, I highly recommend that you look through your coding manuals. Don't tab, don't write, do not highlight because you do not need them. You do not need writing, you do not need tabbing, you do not need highlighting. What you have to do is learn how to use the book. And you can't do that when you have training wheels on your book. There's a lot of people that don't know what's in the appendixes and the books that I recommend, they are A-OK -okay to use on your coding exams. And those appendixes have a lot of really good information in them. But you would know that by going through those books as well. OK, so um, hanging up posters. It doesn't have to be all of these posters from everywhere, but sometimes you can get really good deals on Amazon on anatomy posters. If you have been studying medical coding for a while and maybe you have last year's coding books, there are anatomy plates in those um, coding books if you have the opt-in books. So you can take those out. You know, obviously, if you have the new coding manuals, what are you going to do with the old ones? You can take those uh, anatomy pictures out and hang them up where you can see them. So that's another way to get that stimulus. 
so that you can watch and look and see every single day those things so that can help you to incorporate that knowledge and, and start to pick it up because it's going to take a while for you to pick it up but just think about like when we were kids and the teacher had the letter on the border of the room right and so just so you can see them every single day in al the alphabet and the numbers and the letters that all that stuff you had all of that to see every single day it's the same thing that you have to do with the coding all right and with learning medical terminology with learning anatomy with doing all of those things there's a lot of options um, again you can go on amazon if you want to you can go to barnes and noble if you want to there's books about um, crossword puzzles, you know, to learn medical terminology. They have those that you can use something to kind of break up the monotony of, you know, working through a workbook, you know, or if you don't want to subscribe to my Patreon channel, that's fine. But there's always that option out there for you. So try not to get overwhelmed. You have to take things one step at a time, because if you're trying to drink from a fire hose, you're not going to be able to get nothing right because you're just trying to do too much at one time. You want to make sure that you are taking your time. You can pace yourself, obviously, but putting in those 20 hours per week is what's really going to get you there. The people that complain and say that they don't understand, and when I ask, how much time are you putting in? Well, five hours. You're never going to understand at five hours. You're never going to understand. It's always going to be this mystery to you. It's always going to be confusing because you're not putting in sufficient enough time. If you tell me 10 hours, I will still tell you that is not enough time. 15 hours is not enough time. It has to be 20 hours per week. It doesn't matter if you are a nurse. It does not matter if you're some other medical professional. You have to put the time in. Now, my nurses may not have to put so much time into medical terminology anatomy because they already have that foundation but maybe they do need a refresher it never hurts to get a refresher in medical terminology and anatomy as well okay we've all seen those videos online with nurses who have mixed up <laughs> uh body locations i'm not gonna point any fingers i'm just saying those videos are out there um, but it's it happens okay so no one is above doing the studies okay no one all right the thing again that I will say is even doctors don't understand what we do as coders so they've had 10 to 15 years to learn medical terminology and anatomy and we as coders in the beginning we have what nine months 12 months or 18 months to learn this stuff I also got somebody on there saying, well, nine months isn't long enough. Well, it may not be long enough for you, but it's a heck of a lot better than these programs that are out there for coding that try to push people to learn coding. Oh, you can learn in four months. Oh, you can learn in uh, two months. Oh, you can learn in six months. Get out of here. There's just no way. And if you're rushing through a program and you complete it and oh yeah, I passed the test, but I bet you, you did it because you did process of elimination, not anything based on merit, okay? If you are covering up the answers when you start looking up codes so that you don't have those multiple choice and you're looking up the codes on your own, then come talk to me. But other than that, if you're just sitting there racing through a program and, and, and get doing those um, uh, process of elimination so that way you can guess your way through a test, your your competence level is going to show when you're out there in the real world quick and it's not going to be because you don't have any experience it's going to be because you don't understand what you're doing everybody gets tested um, when you're starting in these coding jobs everybody gets tested because they have to see where your competence level is at so it doesn't matter if you have an apprentice status on your name or if you have no experience that does not matter um, if you're showing that you don't have competence because that's why you're not getting hired There's plenty of people who are brand new who demonstrate their competence when they're given a test and they say Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give you a try and sometimes these employers are pleasantly surprised when they see somebody that's Actually competent in what they do even though they're brand new and they do give them a chance but a lot of people want to be discouraged and not want to apply just because 
Um, it doesn't say entry level, okay? But that's a whole another episode for another time. <laughs> um, just for the purposes of today's episode, the message is to take your time learning medical terminology. If you are in one subject, you stay on one subject. Don't start worrying about pathophysiology or anatomy or any of those other things until you get one subject down. You complete that course and then you move on to the next one. And if you're not in a formal program, then you get a workbook for whatever it is, whether it's medical terminology or anatomy and physiology or pathophysiology, you work through that workbook and then that's, that's you going through a course. And then you move on. Everything is going to be built upon. And the things that you are having trouble recalling, make a flashcard about that. And so that way you have your list and you can work through those as time goes on so that you can master that. That's just my advice anyway. It's not hard, guys. It is difficult to learn, yes, as far as like all of the amount of information. But the steps to learning it are actually very easy. Just putting in the time. And if you don't understand, again, find yourself a mentor. A mentor will help you for free. You can find those on LinkedIn. Uh, find a tutor if you need somebody to be one-on-one -on -one with you um, that can help you. Because then you're paying for that person's time. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, best of luck to you out there if you are studying right now. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all again. Bye.